In the latest of our Tech Explainer videos, we're looking at CPUs and specifically the differences between the Intel Xeon Scalable and Intel Core families and the reasons you choose one over the other dependent on your use case. Now, it's not easy to immediately understand how CPUs in a single family differ from each other, let alone different families. Terms such as clock speeds, core counts and caches can all be very confusing and may not be directly comparable. For instance, one of the most popular Intel Core CPUs is the Core i9-12900K, but you'd be forgiven for wondering what on earth that name actually means. Well, Core refers to the family name, and in this case, it's aimed at systems such as desktops, laptops, and workstations. Next, i9 is the range. i9 is actually the top end of the range, which includes i3, i5, i7 and then i9. Then the next number refers to the generation, so in this case 12 represents the 12th generation of Intel Core processors. And then the remaining three numbers are the specific model number unique to that CPU. And last but not least, the letter at the end denotes a special feature, so in this case of the Core i9-12900K, the K indicates the CPU is for overclocking, whilst if there was an F, this indicates that there's no integrated GPU. Now, the Xeon Scalable family, though, uses a slightly different system. Let's take the Intel Xeon Platinum 8380, for example. The Xeon again refers to the family, this time aimed at server and, in some cases, very high-end workstation use. Platinum denotes the range, again the top end from the silver, gold and then platinum portfolios. The 8 from the 8380 is the SKU level, broadly speaking, the higher the number, the higher the spec. The 3 is the generation, in this case, 3rd gen Xeon Scalable, and the 80 refers to the processor model number. Again, the higher the number, the more powerful the CPU. And if there were a letter at the end, this would tell us that it has a special feature, much like the K did in the earlier example. To make things slightly more confusing though, the same letters used for Core CPUs and Xeon Scalable CPUs don't necessarily indicate the same thing. For instance, the T used with Xeon processors indicates a CPU with a long life cycle and thermal reliability, ideal for embedded projects. Whilst for a Core CPU, the T indicates low power, making it ideal for small form factor PCs. The moral of the story being, always double check when you're designing a system. So now we understand a little about how Intel server and client CPU families are differently described, we can begin to look deeper into the specifics of each. Generally speaking, either of the CPU family specifications will be described in terms of cores, threads and cache, plus other features such as integrated graphics. For the 12th gen core family ranges, core count tops out at 4, 10, 12 and 16 the i3, i5, i7 and i9 ranges respectively. And as you'd expect, cache on the CPU also increases across the ranges too. The integrated graphics also increases in capability as you go up the range, meaning higher range CPUs will be able to natively cope with more complex and demanding applications due to the combinations of many cores, higher cache and better graphics capability. For most of your office applications, a CPU with integrated graphics is sufficient, but if you're working on specialist workloads such as CAD, CAE, AEC and BIM, we'd always recommend installing a discrete graphics card. When it comes to the Xeon scalable family, the core, thread and cache count increases in the same way, but there are various important key differences to note. Firstly, the core and thread counts go much higher, and secondly, the cache size is a bigger too. Now, although these all play a part in additional performance for demanding tasks, it's the greater number of memory channels, more PCIe lanes and ECC memory support that add far greater capability and reliability. The greater number of memory channels means that a server scales to much more RAM capacity than a desktop, laptop or workstation, up to 4 terabytes for each Xeon scalable CPU, or 6 terabytes when using a combination of RAM and Optane memory. As you can see in this table, there's a column for ECC RAM support. Now, only Xeon scalable processors fully support ECC RAM though. It's arguably the single most important feature that Xeon scalable offers over core since ECC is especially important with higher RAM capacities and with business critical cases where RAM failures are both more common and more devastating when they do occur. 
ECC stands for Error Correction Code, which detects and corrects most common data corruption before it occurs, eliminating the cause of many system crashes and translates to more stable overall performance. And you can learn even more about ECC memory by watching the video that we've linked at the end of this one. Now, it's also worth mentioning that Xeon's scalable processors generally use different CPU architectures and process nodes, which support both these cache and core count improvements. But also offer more efficient power with a lower TDP. This translates to less heat generated, more heat dissipated and less stress on the hardware long term, making them ideal for high stress workloads on a 24-7, 365 basis. In addition, the prefetchers, which help boost cache performance in Xeon scalable processors, are optimized for server applications, where the prefetchers in core processors are optimized for games and consumer applications. Another major advantage of Xeon scalable over core processors is that for heavily threaded applications that benefit from as many CPU cores as possible, such as machine learning and computational fluid dynamics, you can, as the scalable name suggests, scale them to two, four or even eight CPUs within a single server. Aside from these additional features that drive reliable and consistent sustained performance, the Xeon Scalable family also has numerous enterprise features such as crypto acceleration, AI acceleration, deep learning boost, software guard extensions and platform firmware resilience. These all add to enhance functionality for mission critical applications and help integrate high performance CPU capabilities into wider networking and storage deployments. So hopefully we've shed some light on how Intel client core CPUs and Intel Xeon scalable server CPUs differ. But as ever, we are here to answer any questions that you might have. So do pop us a comment below or get in touch with our team. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos.